if you follow the Irish news and the British news, you'll have probably noticed something about the BBC's news page for Northern Ireland. It tends to stick all current events of major importance for the Republic of Ireland somewhere down the bottom of that page as though that part of Ireland was still an adjunct of the empire. And it seems to have avoided that today. Let's have a look at the Irish news page first. Here's Radio Television Aaron. Rafa operation violates humanitarian law. Tanish and Minister for Foreign Affairs, Michal Martin, has said he is in no doubt that the continued bombardment on Rafa will constitute a war crime and gravely violates international humanitarian law. Now, normally, when you go to Northern Ireland's section on the BBC, as I say, you'll find sort of any big doings of the day in Ireland will be wandering about down the bottom. Not today. Today, we've got B&B manager stabbed 55 times during murder. Had I seen that, I clearly I would have actually come back to it. But leaving that aside, <laughs> what do we have underneath? No water charges while I'm in office. Good luck with that, Michelle. Um... <laughs> Not sure how you're going to manage it, but good luck with it. Minister announces one million to fix Northern Ireland potholes. And, as, and oh, doctor fined one thousand pound for doing a hundred and eleven miles per hour in a seventy miles per hour zone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as we keep going down, we've got some other articles for the day. Um, features analysis. I'd be an Egypt not to invite Jai Oscar's killer Murphy. The volunteers fighting to conserve Northern Ireland's wildlife. I've seen lots of firsts, says Camlos and Tira. But as we go down and down and down and down, there's nothing about that major event in in Irish political life. And you would have to say, when the <sighs> Tanish Tia comes out with a remark like that, it's a fairly major issue and something you might expect to be reported on. <sighs> Special, but no, it seems to have gone off for a little wonder. In any case, I'll do a bit of reporting on it. I'm not going to play the the video of it, but we'll just have a quick look at it. Mule Martin was speaking after Israeli special forces launched an operation in the southern Gaza city in which at least 67 people were killed and two Israeli hostages freed. Now, Ireland and Israel seem to be at constant loggerheads over what's going on there in Palestine and Israel, and they seem to be butting heads as like um, constantly and constantly, um, well, having a little grumble at each other. We are now looking at is what now the largest refugee in the camp in the world, in terms of 1.5 million people in Rafa. Mr. Martin said they cannot be displaced safely to bomb and to mount a military operation in such a confined area with so many people is absolutely inhumane, unacceptable. And the international community must do everything it possibly can to put the pressure on Israel not to proceed with this invasion. Now, realistically, Ireland is a small country and has limited power, but it does have a great deal of soft power due to the large size of the Irish diaspora. And I imagine that, that will be brought to bear at points. Um, it's very interesting that the BBC has kind of declined to sort of report on this uh, has minimised it and shuffled it off to a corner because, of course, they have a totally different take on this situation and criticism of what's going on over there is far less common among the British government than it is among the Irish government. So there's a different political understanding at work. I do find it quite interesting because I remember the days when um, certain politicians from from Ireland, where we were had to have their voices dubbed on top of them, or they couldn't speak at all, etc., 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 or their words were edited out. And this seems a more advanced version of the same game.